Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring Juniper Secure Connect JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example. In this example, we have a few different things to talk about. Let's first look at the topology. Here on the topology, we have SRX1. It has a connection to the user zone, which is just your everyday employees doing their jobs. Then we have the server zone, where we have different servers that users need to access, whether they're inside the user zone or they are a remote worker. So you can see here that SRX1 is connected to the internet as well through the untrust zone. And then we have the remote worker that is connected to the internet that needs to access server one in the servers zone. All right, so how are we gonna do this? Well, we're going to use Juniper Secure Connect to provide that access. And we're going to use JWeb to configure it. With this, we're going to use local authentication. And also, as I mentioned earlier, the remote worker needs access to server one, but that remote worker should not be able to access devices in the user's zone. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb of SRX1 and get this going. All right, so here is SRX1 in the JWeb. And there's a few things we need to do first. First, we need to create a local certificate. And we'll use this certificate when users connect, that is remote workers connect to the SRX device. So let's go to certificate management, device certificates, and this is under device administration. And there's nothing here. So let's click the create button. And we need to call this something. Let's call this Juniper EDU. We'll set this RSA encryption is fine, 248 bits. We'll set the domain component, Juniper, common name EDU. You have to at least do that there. And then domain name, we're going to say edu.juniper.net. And then we have to set the IP address. And this IP address here, now this is the external IP address of the SRX1 device. So that is the interface IP address that is pointing towards the internet. And this will just take a few seconds to create the certificate. All right, so the certificate has been created successfully. Great, so let's go ahead and tell the SRX to use it. So we need to go to basic settings and then system services. And then if we scroll down, we'll see HTTPS. We need to enable that. And under here, we need to select that certificate and that's going to be PKI certificate. And then we select this certificate we just created. And then we need to scroll back up and hit save. Now it asks us to commit, but we don't need to do that right now. Let's go ahead and finish the rest of the configuration. Okay, so next we need to go to VPN. And you can see here that there are no VPNs. So let's click Create VPN and then select the Remote Access and then Juniper Secure Connect. And first we need to give the VPN a name. We'll call this RA-LB for Remote Access Learning Byte. And then we need to click the Remote User to configure down here. So we click that section and we have a few different things we can use here. We can use the default profile. Now you can hover over this to find out more information and of all these different settings. But for what we're doing here, the default settings of the default profile, manual connection, things like that is going to work perfect. So we don't need to make any changes here for this basic setup. Just click OK. And then you can see here that this changed. We've got a green check mark and we see a blue line going out to the internet. So we're good with that configuration. We can go back here and change it if we really want. But now we need to click the local gateway icon and configure the SRX device how we want it. Okay, we need to specify an IKE ID. I'm going to call this lab at edu.juniper.net. And we need to next select the external interface. And that's going to be, if you recall, we marked on the certificate the 10.111.111.1 IP. And so that's going to be this Gigi001 interface. That's very important that that lines up. And then we need to select a tunnel interface. And there's nothing configured, so we can click the add button and we're going to use the default unit of zero, and we need to select a zone. And here we're going to select the VPN zone. This has been something that I've created beforehand, so you'll need to create the zone you want beforehand, of course. And we can specify the routing instance. We just have the default master configured, so that's fine. And we need to specify a pre-shared key. We'll say lab123 for that. ASCII is fine. You have the option of ASCII or hexadecimal. And then user authentication. Nothing configured already, so we need to click the Add button. And remember, we're doing local authentication here.
give it a name and address assignment. There's nothing configured. So we need to create address pool or click the create address pool link. And we'll name this pool. We'll just call this RA pool dash LB network address. Select that network address and we'll give it a 24 mask. And we need to specify at least a primary DNS server. And then we need to specify the range we want to use in that network. And so we're going to call this RA dash pool dash range dash LB specify a lower limit of 10.77.77.10 high limit of 10.77.77. Say 50. Click the check mark to save that and then click OK. And we're not done yet. We need to select local authentication. If we were doing radius authentication, we would select that, but we don't need to do that for this learning byte. Then we need to create some users. So here we're just going to say lab, lab123 for our remote worker. Of course, that would be much different in a production network. Then click OK here. And then we need to specify an SSL VPN profile. Again, there's nothing configured, so we need to click the Add button. And we'll call this SSL Pro Learning Byte for the profile name. And we need to specify an SSL termination profile. Of course, that's not configured, so let's click the Add button and create one. And here we just specify the name. And then we select the certificate that we created. And here we can see that it auto selects the only one we have. And so that's that Juniper EDU RSA certificate. And we can click the add button here to jump us back to that other screen in which we would create a certificate or you could import a certificate as well. And we'll just click okay again to finish creating that and specifying that SSL VPN profile. Now this next one is really cool. Source NAT traffic. Now, what does that do? Well, when the traffic comes in, it's going to use that range of 10.77.77.0 or that network. And so right now, the other devices in the network don't know how to get to that subnet. And so what we can do is we can do two things. We can create a static route for that, or we can use source NAT and NAT it to one of the internal interfaces, NAT this traffic that is, to one of the internal interfaces on the SRX device. And we're going to specify the IP address that is associated with Gigi002, which is shown there on the screen. And then we need to specify protected networks. You know, what networks should the remote workers have access to? We need to specify the zone. Of course, it's the server's zone. We talked about that earlier. And then we have server one. We have the IP address here. This is something that's just in the address book. We could click the add button to add another entry in the address book. And right now it's set to any. So any is selected, so that means that anything's going to be accessible for the remote access workers. Remember, we didn't want that. We didn't want them to access the user's network. And so what we need to do here is we need to select that address and move it over. And notice this little information pop-up up top. It says split tunnel is enabled when specific addresses other than any are selected. So now what this does by selecting that, this enables split tunneling as well. How cool is that? Now we're only going to have traffic that is going to the 10.60.60.100 address, which is server one. That's the only traffic that's going to go through a tunnel. Now, that's great because in this day and age where there's so many remote workers, you may not want all their internet bound traffic going through your SRX device. So let's go ahead and click OK. Finish that off there and click OK again. That is the local gateway configuration. Now we can do some additional configurations by selecting that settings icon down there, but it's unnecessary. You know, we have some advanced configuration as well, but for what we're doing, it's totally unnecessary. I'll just expand that so you can see what's in there, uh, but we don't need to do that. And so I can go ahead and collapse that again. And so we're basically done with the setup. And also we're using pre-shared key. I didn't mention that before. And also one other thing is the auto create firewall policy option. We can say no or yes. If we say yes, it's going to create some firewall policies that will permit this traffic. So that's kind of cool. Let's go ahead and save that. And then it tells us we need to commit again. And again, it tells us uh, multiple times. So let's go ahead and follow through with that and commit the configuration. All right, so that configuration committed successfully. Awesome. We see our new VPN that is configured here. So let's go ahead and then jump to that remote worker device and see how this works. All right, so here is the remote worker device and we have Juniper Secure Connect, the client application already open. And so before we do that, let's first attempt to ping 
that server one device just to show you that we can't reach it without first connecting with Juniper Secure Connect. And yeah, this is not working. It's just going to time out. You can see request timeout. I'm just going to kill that ping. So let's go ahead and connect. So let's say new connection. And you would need to type in the gateway address here using HTTPS. And I've already done that previously. So it just remembers my last configuration. So I don't have to type that again. And then let's hit the connection button. And it wants us to enter the user ID and password. So it's going to be our lab and lab123. And we get presented with a warning. And why are we being presented with this? Well, this is that certificate that we created on the SRX device. So it's saying, whoa, this is not a globally trusted certificate. And that's okay. We created it. We know it's okay. We click accept, and that's going to install that certificate locally. So the users will not have to do that again after doing this once. Now, alternatively, you could go and buy a certificate that is a trusted certificate and use that instead. But here, we're just going to use the self-generated certificate since, you know, it's, it's free, which is great. So we accepted that. And you can see the name changed to RALB. That's our remote access learning byte. And the tunnel is being set up. And great, we see that connection established. Now I'm going to pull that back up. It just auto minimizes. Can restore that. And you can see, great, that looks good. Nothing in, nothing out. Let's go ahead and try to ping that server. And fantastic. We have communication with server one. That's great. And you can see here, data transmit, data receive. We have 240 on both going in and out. So that's bytes, not packets, of course. And so you can simply just disconnect by clicking that button again, that connection button, and accidentally hit the reconnect again fast. And if we reconnect, you can see here again that we're not going to get prompted about that certificate since we accepted it earlier. And the connection is there again. It auto hides, and I'll bring that back up. And so one other thing we could do, which I'm not going to do because for the sake of time, is we could go back into SRX1 and look at the IKE and IPsec information for the security associations as well as statistics. But uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that. And yeah, everything's working great here. We have remote access as we want to have with the criteria of this learning byte. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure and verify Juniper Secure Connect. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.